Hi cozy people, so today we're going to be talking about prochlorperazine and for the first time I am going to put a bit of a, I don't know if it's should be trigger or content warning on this one, so it's going to be a heads up about something I want to say so we'll get to that when we get to it. But starting with some general things about this medication, so prochlorperazine, my one was upside down, prochlorperazine is a medication that's used for nausea and vomiting. It's really effective for lots of things. It can be migraines, problems with the inner ear, like vertigo, potentially travel sickness, and then just anything else that can cause nausea and vomiting. It is generally regarded as a really good medication for that. And in low doses, used sparingly, it often is extremely well tolerated and people report no side effects in a lot of cases and the side effects it does have are often very mild. So especially in the UK, this is first line, like... <laughs> I wanna say first resort, as in like opposite to last resort. This is one of the first things that people try in the UK, either doctors or people buying it over the counter. And as I say, it's because it's just so well tolerated. Um, and when I compare it to some of the others that are used here, We've got one called cyclozine, which can make you very drowsy and it can cause tachycardia and a lot of problems right off the bat, headaches also. We also have ondansetron, which is extremely expensive. They don't like to prescribe it and that one can wreak havoc with your intestines, to be honest. Like you can find yourself not being able to go to the toilet for days, weeks, etc. with that. So prochlorperazine, <laughs> And then there's prochlorperazine, which, as I say, when used in low doses and sparingly, for many people, it doesn't seem to have any side effects. So I was using this for my nausea and vomiting for about five years. Yeah, something like that. About around five years I was taking this and I was taking it about four days a week. And I didn't want to talk about my doses, but there's... I kind of have to when I get onto what I'm going to get onto. So I was taking six milligrams once or twice a day, around four to five days a week. During my worst times, I would be taking it seven days a week. During my better times, I may only take it two or three times a week. And I was really happy doing that. <laughs> it made my quality of life so much better. I had minimal side effects and yeah, I was, <laughs> I was happy in that state. <laughs> and so, I would heavily suggest that if you're on this medication long term and you absolutely like resolutely cannot lower your doses in any way whether that be by frequency or your daily amount you possibly may not want to hear what I'm going to say next and the reason I'm sharing it is because after five years on the medication a doctor sat me down and had this conversation with me just realised all of the mess in the background. <laughs> oh well, so lovely. <laughs> and that conversation really changed things for me. Because I'm in a position where, like, I guess I could hold off in certain cases. I don't know, my doctors just felt like because I'm on this as needed and not as part of my daily medications, they wanted to tell me about quite a serious late onset side effect. So if you're not in the position to hear this because you can't change your doses, you may be better off not hearing it. And what I'm about to say, you might not like to hear. I really didn't like to hear this and I was in denial about it for a few days. And then when I came to terms with it, I realized I was actually happy to know about it because then I could, when I can, put off taking it. And still, it hasn't changed my usage of this medication drastically because I can't go without it a lot of the times, but I am at least more mindful and there are situations I try to put it off. So if you don't want to hear this next bit, then click off now. But in cases where it is used long term and in fairly high doses, it can cause something called tardive dyskinesia. This is listed in the leaflet because I ran to the leaflet afterwards after my doctor said this to me. And it is listed as very rare. The side effect is abnormal movements, tremors, and muscle rigidity, and unusual movements of the face and tongue. I don't know so much about the rest of the body, 
but my doctor did say to me she has seen cases where people have been on prochlorperazine at high doses daily and they get tardive dyskinesia which is where their face spasms and jerks and almost makes like a grimacing um, movement and it's completely uncontrollable and it's like this twitchy jerky grimacing thing that your face does and she just said to me I really want to prevent you getting it but it's very difficult because everyone has sort of a different level that this would happen to them some people would never have it happen to them um, and then for other people their threshold for this happening would be lower and she said the worst thing is is that once you get this it's irreversible and I don't know if it would always stay as severe as it is in the beginning but she said to me even when you come off the protoperazine you would be left with the tardive of dyskinesia and that's why she said to me that I need to do everything I can to lower my use of this medication because once I get it I can't just uh, I mean if I were to get it I wouldn't be able to just stop this and make the tardive of dyskinesia go away I could stop the protoperazine and that um, that condition would remain. <laughs> now I feel awful telling you because I remember how I felt finding this out and I was devastated by it. My quality of life then went down because I was throwing up and being sick a lot more. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm grateful to know it. And to put this in perspective, I must know like, I don't know, like 50 to 100 people who are on daily long-term protoperazine and most cases have been absolutely fine so that's reassuring me myself i was on it for five plus years not knowing so i was taking it every time i needed to uh, like i'd throw up once and then i'd take it to make myself better um and i mean better not a cure just like better than i was um so like it's not going to affect many people but I still would rather have this information. And because I talk about this medication on my channel and I recommend it, I felt like I couldn't continue to talk about it in good faith, knowing what I know. And even though I've always said, use it sparingly unless you're under the guidance of a doctor, because you can buy it over the counter, I've always said, please use sparingly. It's not meant for long-term use. It's not meant for daily use. I've always said those things but it's easier to understand when you know the reason for not doing it. Because when you take this medication, it seems all like there's no side effects. You would just keep doing it because you think, well, I'm so much better, this is good for me, this is making me more well. But now that I know that it can have that late onset thing, I thought people should also have that information because you would just gloss over it. It's in the very rare section of the leaflet. Um, but sadly, it does happen to some people, so. I'm really sorry to be the bearer of bad news because I know this is not good news <laughs> but as I say you just have to be mindful about it if you can be mindful about your usage of it and if you can't cut down on this medication then it's kind of like it's not your thing to worry about because nothing can be done in that case anyway. So yeah as a takeaway from this video it is amazing especially when used in low doses uh, as needed um, but if you can't, if you are on it daily, long term, and you can't come off it, then this kind of isn't like your battle to worry about. Like you've you've got other more pressing things to worry about than this. Because if it can't be changed, then you know it can't be changed, and there's no point really pondering and worrying over it because it can't be changed anyway. But if you are, if you are in a position where you can potentially lower your dosage slightly then I would consider doing that for people who are buying this over the counter on my advice please follow what I have been saying all along which is to use sparingly um, especially if you're not under the guidance of a doctor but you could also book a doctor's appointment and say to them you've been buying this over the counter and could you get any advice about how best to use it frequency stuff like that also following whatever it says in the leaflet this is a prescription leaflet so i've i'm not really able to tell you what the over-the-counter one says because i don't have it with me but the over-the-counter leaflet should have appropriate information for people who are taking it over the counter 
and yeah this is a great medication for many people i certainly am not going to stop taking it it remains as one of my greatest blessings in life like seriously for the quality of life it gives me um and yeah it's a great medication but if you can then i guess the takeaway is to just be mindful with it <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye Oh hi again, so this is just a note to my viewers who follow the channel, um, basically I've been really struggling to get myself ready for videos and then I discovered a filter, <laughs> this is like the longest disclaimer ever, I discovered a filter which brightens your under eye circles. When I get ready for my videos, the things that take the most time were doing my hair and the extremely heavy under eye concealer that I used to wear. But I've now found um, heatless curlers. So you just wrap your hair in it and go to bed <laughs> and take it out. So that's my hair sorted. And then I also found this filter which um, brightens and blurs under your eyes. Now this is gonna make things a lot easier for me and mean I can feel more often because instead of like spending ages trying to find flattering lighting for my under eye circles and putting on this heavy concealer and then taking the heavy concealer off afterwards, if I just use this filter, it solves a lot of my problems. So this is a heads up that I will probably be using this going forwards. And I thought I would show you as well, the filter, like it is pretty light. I don't know if you can see, but you can't really see anything on here all it does is brightens the under eyes. I do have an extremely heavy filter that I use for my um, shorts and that has like full glam makeup. It even like makes my cheeks and my lips look slightly different. So I'm not using that because that didn't feel right to do, but this is a heads up that I will. <laughs> I will be using this under eye brightener because it makes things so much easier for me. If you don't want to watch because of that, then I understand, but I just wanted to give a a heads up that I will be doing that um, and in the future I won't be referencing it referencing to that but I will include if I remember a little note in the description um, just for transparency that I'm going to be doing that so yeah it's exciting that I found an easier way to film so I will see you next week bye